let's be honest, is there really anything that brings a homeschooling mom more joy than an awesome cup of coffee and writing things down in a brand new planner? Hey friends, welcome back to my Practically Imperfect Life. If it's your first time here, welcome. My name is Abby. I'm a homeschooling mom of two high schoolers. Today, I wanted to talk to you about all things planners, specifically ones for homeschool. I'm sure many of us have a favorite planner, one that we use kind of to just organize our everyday life. And I could probably do a whole video about mine. I, uh, I have like an A5 size planner that goes in a six ring little binder package. And that's where I keep track of, you know, day-to-day -day schedules, doctor's appointments, meal planning, and I have a bunch of other things that I kind of incorporate into there. Um, I also keep a bullet journal uh, more for my artistic side. I like to be able to draw things and kind of create pictures. And I use that one for habit tracking, mood tracking, gratitude journals, kind of things like that. But for our homeschool, I have those things organized separately. Uh, simply so when I'm sitting down, you know, during kind of the time I block out for homeschool planning and homeschool setup, I am only looking at homeschool things and I'm not getting overwhelmed with all the other stuff that is going on in life. And then we also use planners for both of my kids. We have used planners. I think this is like our fifth year using planners. We did change it up this year and I'll be showing you more closely what exactly it is I use for my high schoolers now and what sort of things I have in it and kind of explain more about why I'm doing it that way. However, I do want to share, um, I'll put a picture up here of the planner we've gotten off Amazon. Uh, we used this for the last three years before now. And I did really like this planner. So I did want to mention it because one, it's fairly affordable. It's really, um, really sturdy. I mean, it held up to <laughs> middle schoolers who basically like throw their stuff around like, you know, crazy. Um, I also liked it because other than being dated, it had a lot of room for customization, specifically in like the number of subjects you could put on there. So rather than me having to squeeze like a whole bunch of stuff into a few small spaces, I could actually spread out the subjects across a two page spread. So it gave me lots of room to be able to, you know, put in assignment information if I needed to get extra notes in there for them. And even when they looked at it, it didn't look so overwhelming because things weren't like crammed into like a little tiny box. So I really, really did like it. Um, the downside to that was that I had to write everything in. And, you know, if you're just writing a simple note, it's like do lesson one, do lesson two. That probably doesn't seem that bad. But when you when you have a lot to write in or if you have, you know, multiple kids, it can get a bit old having to write it all in every single week. Um, and that's kind of how I started to feel about it. Plus, if I needed to make a change, uh, you know, what are you going to do? White it out or cross it out or, or whatnot? I didn't like that either. I wanted it to be able to be clean and neat and also be something where I could have a copy of what it is that's in their planners so I can better keep track of where we're at with things and, you know, what things are being done. So that's why I made a couple of changes to how we did planners this year. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you over and I'm going to show you kind of a deep dive into the planners that I'm using for both of my kids this year, how they're set up. And then I will show you the planner setup that I have for myself as well. Okay, so I do have three different types of planners here to show you. So this is the style that my students have. I have one that helps me to just keep track of tasks I need to do that are homeschool related each day. And then I have kind of my uh, document planner here. I'm going to go ahead and start with this one for the kids here first. So this is the book that my kids have. So as you can see, it is kind of like a three ring binder. Uh, this is by five star. I wanted this type though, because like a traditional three ring binder, you know, you have to kind of leave it open if you're going to be looking into it and it would take up a ton of desk space. This one they can flip around and use like that. And I love that. So um, it does have these spots. Sorry, I'm trying to do this one-handed. You can pull it off and add in your pages and then just clip it back shut. So I do like these. They're pretty sturdy. You know, if they want to add stickers or anything like that to decorate it, they can. The first page that both of my kids have is this course list and grading uh, for all of their classes. So if you watched my video on how I do grades for them, 
you'll know that I do weighted grades. So a regular class um, is worth a certain number of points when we're doing GPA. Whereas if it's an honors class or an AP class, those will be weighted differently. And we are keeping track of their credits for their transcripts. So this explains that to them. It also explains like how I keep track of the grades. And for each class that they're taking, it tells them the course name, how many credits it's worth, and then how am, how am I grading it? Then inside this here, it tells her our grading scale. So this is the grading scale I plan to use all during high school. And it talks about the quality points, uh, which is how we determine GPA. So it explains that to her, um, how we are doing that. So she can figure out her GPA if she wanted to. And then there's a page where she can figure out the math for her GPA. And then in this part here is where her assignments go for any day. So this is what I print out for them every week. There is one page that is just our group subjects. So this tells them what we're doing each day of the week for our, our group work. Then they have a two page spread for their individual assignments. Oh, come on, turn. All right, there we go. So for the course, the assignments are typed in for each day. Now this might look like something that would take me a whole bunch of time to do each week, but in reality, it really doesn't take that much time at all because I don't have to retype the whole thing. Some things just change a little bit. For example, each day that she has algebra, she watches a dive lesson, a dive math lesson, and then she has a problem set to do. So I literally just have to change the problem set number. And her tests are always midweek, so I just have to change the test number. It really doesn't take all that much time to, to update. I just am taking things from my Excel planner that I've created and I'm typing it into here for them and printing it off. I do put like checked by mom graded. I have a copy of this that you'll see in my planner. And so when I've seen that the work is done, I check mark on my version checked by mom. And when I have graded it and entered it in the grade book, I will check the graded one because not every assignment needs to be graded. I wanna check and make sure that they've done it. But for example, I'm not grading all of the comprehension questions for this chapter of chemistry until she's at the end of the chapter. But I just wanna make sure that she's done the ones for that particular day. And then their guest hollow classes. So my daughter's doing guest hollow botany and my son is doing guest hollow cultural geography. Uh, there's quite a bit more to those classes as far as reading assignments and videos and projects. So rather than trying to squeeze that onto here, I just do that on a separate page. So this is her week eight botany. And you can see each day she's got a couple of pages from different books that she's assigned to read. If there's videos that are linked for her to watch, those are on there. Uh, she has to do a daily writing in her narration journal. And if there's like a project, like on Wednesday, we're gonna be making homemade peanut butter. And then the next day she's going to make peanut butter cookies, ideally using the homemade peanut butter from the day before. So that is all just listed on there. And then they can just, again, highlight it off as they get it complete. Another page that I have in here for them is uh, credits for graduation. Now I have on here credits required for graduation. Obviously you can determine what it is your high school student needs to graduate. We chose to kind of design our high school years around our state's requirements for an academic honors diploma. So in our state, there's like the regular diploma, there's academic honors, and there's obviously a few higher requirements to be able to do that. So this essentially tells them what those requirements are. I also included this info sheet in here for them about different types of tests and traditionally when they're taken, because uh, we, we have started to look into some of these things and test prep, and I'm sorry about the glare on the page there, guys. It's kind of unavoidable with the light. Um, so that way they can get a feel for what different types of college entrance exams they might be taking. Also has a list of what credits they are earning each semester. So my daughters, we have um, a list of what she did in the ninth grade. And then down here where it says like ninth grade summer, these two down here where it says ninth and 10th grade summer, these are actually courses that she earned credit for back in eighth grade. So she did several courses in eighth grade that will actually count as high school credits. So it's just a listing on there. So this is not a formal transcript by any stretch of the imagination, but it's just a nice sheet where we can start to keep track of what have we done and what do we still need to do. And then 
you know, 11th and 12th grade are blank. But this has worked out really nice for her. I especially like printing off these assignments weekly. Again, if I notice that there's a mistake, I just fix it and reprint it. And it's nice. And the kids have liked them. All right, let's go ahead and swap out and we'll show you mine. All right, so like I said, I actually have kind of two planners here. Um, this one's not as you know extensive in what's in it. So I'll show you this one first. So I have a regular three reminder and a lot of the stuff that I have in here are duplicates of what my kids have, but I just wanted to make sure I had a copy. So I have my grading scale and where I got it from, credits required for graduation, figuring out GPA, that sort of stuff. And then the copy of the course list and the grading um, guides for the year, I have one copy for each of my kids. So my sons and my daughters, I also have the same sort of paper in here showing what classes they're doing each year, just high school planning sheets. This is where I got that um, information as far as uh, the, the whole academic honors diploma. This is uh, from the Indiana Department of Ed website. So you can see like this is, they have what their basic diploma, their core 40, these are the classes you need to graduate. And then there's the requirements for the academic honors. So I just printed that out so I would have a copy there. And then this is where I keep my copy of their assignment sheets. Again, I don't need to keep these necessarily for, you know, weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, we're only eight weeks into our school year. So I think what I'm going to do is like when we hit the first quarter, I'll clear this out and then I will, you know, start fresh from there. But for me, this is a great checklist. So with the group stuff or our group subjects, I can just check off as we complete different assignments that I know that I have done them with them. But what I will do, again, when they do an assignment, I'll check that it's done and I'll just put a check mark there so I can be like, okay, I know it's completed. I've seen it. And then if I have something listed that needs to be graded, once I've graded it and entered it in the grade book, I'll mark it off as graded in here. And that is just a good double check for me. So I don't miss anything or, um, you know, forget to enter something in the grade book. So again, the whole little checked by mom and graded thing is, more for me than for the kids. I just didn't want to have to type up two different versions of this and they know that. And then the last part here is actually my my German um, lesson plans. So our German curriculum comes in all German. I mean, it is all German. So I, I found it easier to do my lesson plans in English and then I uh, utilize the book. So this is my lesson plan for the current chapter we're on, and I just mark off where we have kind of finished for any given day on there. So we're almost done with this chapter, and then I will be putting in the lesson plans for the next one. So this is the one that I, you know, I keep mostly on my desk. So as I'm checking off assignments and entering them in, I have this handy. All right. This other planner that I have was a digital purchase. So this came from Erica at Confessions of a Homeschooler. Uh, she has a lot of really great versions of lesson planners. She has ones that are, you know, vertical. She has ones that are horizontal. She has ones that are dated, non-dated. This year, I decided to purchase the non-dated one. Uh, I really just didn't think I needed the dated one. And I like that I'll be able to print off this year after year and then just write in the dates. Her planners come with a lot of optional pages in the download. You can have reading lists, field trip tracking forms, curriculum tracking forms, attendance forms, goal sheets. I mean, there's, there's all kinds of stuff. I can just print off what it is that I need. And I didn't need a lot of those extra ones, so I didn't print them. I printed this on some cardstock that I got. And then I have a cinch binding machine which you know punches the holes and allows me to add a spiral binder. You could just print this off and take it to like Staples or you know Office Depot and have them bind it. I had so many different things to print off and bind this year that you know when I priced it out it was getting kind of ridiculous to have them all spiral bound. And I bought the cinch and I thought well I'll just use that and I've used it a ton and kind of gotten obsessed with making these. Anyways, 
just to kind of give you an idea of how this looks, let me kind of flip you to October. So October at a glance, I don't write anything that's not school related on this, um, unless it's going to interrupt the school day. That is because I have a daily planner that has, you know, practices and basketball games and golf lessons and all of that other stuff in it. This is just, hey, what might impact our actual school day? And then each week, this is what I fill out. So if you were using this more as like a student planner, you could certainly use these different color codes here and, you know, do one subject per line and then, you know, do your days of the week. I didn't really feel that's necessary because I don't have something that I need to do each day for each subject. This list here is really just, hey, this is what I need to print or pull or prep on any given day. Now, some of this stuff I will do like on Sunday when I'm prepping for the week, but some things I'll just kind of do, you know, on that given day. Monday is always kind of the heaviest day for me to get stuff done. You know, so like for this coming week, I need to copy German worksheets for Tuesday. We're, we're ramping up to take a test. So I have some specific things I need to get done. My son had a biology experiment on Monday, so I needed to pull the biology supplies and have those ready to go for him. And then when I prep like their, their guest hollow curriculum, so again, the, their, those two curriculums, their botany class and cultural geography is heavily based on living books. So I pull out just the books that are going to be used in the two classes um, each week and set them up in that area. Anyways, that's how I utilize this. So this stays open on our little kind of like dining table we have down in our homeschool room for me because that's, you know, where I will, you know, check stuff off um, each night. So I'll just come downstairs. I'll say, okay, what do I need to do for the next day? Do it, check it off, done. And then my other planner, like I said, is over on my desk where my desktop computer is. That's where I enter grades. So that way I can do that. All right, guys, that is it for today. Thank you so much for joining me for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you can find out when I post new homeschooling and mom life content. I will try to link everything that I can down in the description box for you, whether that be a physical product or a digital download. Have a great one, everybody. We'll see you next time. Thank you.